What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the pressure coefficient. We'll be going through what is it, why is it important, and some useful equations. So first of all, what is it? Let me quickly write an equation first, and then we'll discuss what it means theoretically and from a practical point of view. So Cp, which is the pressure coefficient, equals P minus P infinity divided by Q. So what are these terms? So first of all, let's talk about P, P, and, and P infinity. So let's say we have a flow and upstream. We have some point. This is the infinity position, so the free stream point. And we have P infinity here, V infinity, and rho infinity. So the, infin the pressure at the free stream point, the velocity there, and the density. Now let's say we have another point downstream. And this point is in the vicinity of an object. So we have some sort of object here, and we have a streamline going through. And we have now the pressure here, the velocity here, and the density. So that's what these two P's mean. The first P, pressure, is the pressure in the second point, And P infinity is the pressure in the free stream velocity, in the stream flow. Now Q, what is Q? Q is something called the dynamic pressure. And if you don't know what this, this term means, check out our video number six in the Aero Fundamentals course, where we go through this as well as static pressure and total pressure. So if you haven't uh, looked at that, go look at that and you'll understand what I'm writing here. So Q, which equals the dynamic pressure, equals half times the density times the velocity squared anywhere in the flow. So that's what the static, that's what the pressure coefficient is. So what is it from a theoretical point of view? So on the bottom line, we have the dynamic pressure, and on the top line, we have the difference between the pressures felt in the flow at two different points, the free stream, direction, free stream flow and another point somewhere else. So why do we normalize it to the dynamic pressure to begin with? Well, the reason why is because if you have two different flows or two different objects or whatever, if you wanted to compare the pressure, so let's say you have one flow, this is the first flow, and the pressure change between the free stream flow and this point is 20 pascals. Then you have another flow and it's 30 pascals. Well, is that more or less? So in, from a quantitative point of view, it is more, but it really depends on how fast the flow is moving because we can see that the dynamic pressure is very strongly related to the velocity. It's actually proportional to the velocity squared. So if we were to increase the flow velocity a little bit, we get a significant increase in the dynamic pressure. And from uh, video number six that we went through, we know that this dynamic pressure can be converted into pressure that the object can feel. And that's very important. So that 30 pascal increase or change compared to the 20 pascal change may not be relatively speaking more because the flow may be much faster. So that increase is only slightly greater than that 20%, that 20 pascal change. And that means that percentage wise, it's actually a lower um, change overall. So by normalizing it to the dynamic pressure, what we get is a non-dimensional coefficient called the pressure coefficient. And that means we can compare two different situations and say, okay, the, if the pressure coefficient in situation one is 0.25 and in number two is 0.15, okay, so the pressure coefficient is much greater for uh, situation one than situation two, even though the pressure changes, the delta P may actually be lower or the um, dynamic pressure may be higher or lower, whatever. So it gives us a way to compare two different situations with different velocities. And the reason why we pick dynamic pressure is because dynamic pressure is really that sort of like that reserve of energy that can create more pressure or reduce the pressure. That's what the pressure in the flow really uh, it hinges on other than the static pressure, which it starts at. So that's what this, the pressure coefficient is. Now, what is, why is it important? So for incompressible flow, for example, Let's say we have incompressible flow. We get some pretty cool equations that we can use. So in incompressible flow, the density is constant. So it means no matter where you are in the flow, the density will be the same. So we can use now Bernoulli's equation. Equation. And if you don't know this, check out video number seven. I should put here video number six for the dynamic pressure, video number seven for Bernoulli's equation. And we know if we have two different points, I'm gonna say a longer streamline because if you watch video number seven, you know that if it's a longer streamline, it, the flow can be rotational. It doesn't have to be irrotational for this um, equation to hold true. So let's say that it's a longer streamline, this point here. We have pressure infinity plus half rho 
infinity here. V squared equals pressure plus half rho V squared. Now the rho, rho infinity is the same as rho. And we can rearrange this equation to go pressure minus pressure infinity oops, equals half rho, because they're the same uh, value, V infinity squared minus V. So what that results in, we know that pressure coefficient equals pressure minus pressure infinity divided by half rho V squared. So we can sub this part into here because P minus P infinity equals this, sub that in, and we get half rho V infinity squared minus V squared divided by half rho V squared. So now we can cancel these out and we're now left with one minus V on in V infinity squared. So that's what CP equals. So now if we know the velocities at two different points, in an incompressible flow, we can then calculate the pressure coefficient quite easily without having to know what the pressures are. That's a very powerful way that we can go about this. So if we have, again, this kind of situation here, and we haven't measured the pressure, but we've measured the velocities, we can figure out what the pressure coefficient change is. And what does this mean now? So if we have um, an incompressible flow, and we have, let's say, a cylinder, the flow comes in, and it hits the stagnation point. So the stagnation point is where the velocity reaches zero. The entire flow gets arrested and it's now zero at this point. So if velocity equals zero, and it's incompressible flow by the way, what does the pressure coefficient equal? Well, we put zero into here and it's gonna be one minus zero. So CP now equals one. And this gives us a very good idea as to what the limits of CP are the pressure coefficient for an incompressible flow. And that is a maximum of one. We can't really get above one with this situation because if the velocity goes negative, then it goes the other way and then we all still get a positive value. So that's the upper limit for the pressure coefficient. That's the maximum we can get in this situation. What about the negative? What is the minimum that we can get? And if you look at this equation, we can actually get negatives with pressures. So if we have, let's say an airfoil, and we have the flow going over it, we know that the flow over an airfoil accelerates over the suction surface, this top surface here. So velocity increases. Now, if velocity here is greater than V infinity, so V infinity is up here upstream, we sub this into this equation and we'll actually get a CP value. It goes to CP is less than zero. So this acceleration of flow over the airfoil actually results in the pressure coefficient dropping. So that means that if we have two airfoils or the same airfoil and we're traveling at different velocities and we calculate what the pressure coefficient is over the top, let's say we have one situation where the pressure coefficient is uh, minus 0 0.5, let's say at this point, another situation where it is minus 0 0.7, which one is better? Well, ideally with all else being equal, CP2 is better because we want to have a greater um, negative value on top, that means that we are reducing the pressure even more from this situation. The only way we can get a negative pressure is if P is less than um, P infinity. So that means that we are dropping the pressure. If the pressure reduces on top and all else, all else equals the same, then it will get greater lift. And that's exactly what we want. So this is one major application of the pressure coefficient and why it is important. We use this when we are comparing airfoils, for example, where the greater the um, that the lower the pressure coefficient is on top, so the more negative, the more uh, lift the airfoil is, is producing. Now that is assuming that the CP underneath stays constant, I should say. So that is what the pressure coefficient is. Let's recap this and sum it all up. So the pressure coefficient, the equation is pressure in any point in the flow minus the pressure in the free stream flow divided by the dynamic pressure. And the dynamic pressure equals half rho v squared. Now, if you haven't watched the video number six, check that out. Now, in an incompressible flow, the density stays constant. This is very important because now we can use Bernoulli's equation and uh, derive a simpler way of determining what the pressure coefficient is. So we solve all this in and we come out to the pressure coefficient equals one minus the velocity divided by the velocity in the free stream flow squared. So if we know the two velocities, we can calculate the pressure coefficient. And that tells us how much the pressure has changed, relatively speaking, along a streamline or wherever along in the flow. Now, in terms of the applications, we can also use them for uh, 
airfoils and cylinders or whatever. So the maximum value CP can attain for an incompressible flow is one. That is where um, here we get velocity equals zero. So the flow hits a surface. It throws off all of its energy, all of its flow, all its energy is speed, and it will then decelerate to zero and a stagnation point. So CP equals one here. Over an airfoil, the more the flow accelerates over the top of an airfoil, the lower the pressure becomes. That's through Bernoulli's equation. And we can put this into Bernoulli's equation and derive it out, or we can just use this equation here that we've already derived. It's the, gonna be the exact same thing. And we'll find that the more, the higher the velocity goes, the no more negative the pressure coefficient becomes. And the value for the, like the most negative you can get, it really just depends on the flow. Like you can get negative values of minus two, minus 2.5 or greater. And that is because the flow accelerates so much that the pressure just drops dramatically through Bernoulli's equation. And the more negative it is, the more lift the airfoil is producing with all else being equal. And that is ideal. So we can compare two graphs showing the pressure coefficient distribution over the airfoil. And we can say, okay, this pressure coefficient is more negative here. So this airfoil is producing more lift, which is what we like. So that's in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. If you want to see more of this, check out, uh, subscribe and check out our playlist on Aero Fundamentals. We can see number six and number seven. And if you want to learn more about this, check out a book called uh, Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by John Anderson. And if you want to um, learn more about theory and or CFD, check out our courses link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.